Welcome to the fourth in our series of applicant support vignettes, annotating evidence. Before we commence the session, the QCT respectfully acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which it operates and the important role of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in teaching and learning in Queensland. We pay our respects and acknowledge the important role of elders, past and present, for they hold the memories of the, trad the traditions, cultures, stories and aspirations of Australia's First Nations people. Your presenters for the vignettes are Adam Malhiros and Samantha Blair, Principal Advisors with the Queensland College of Teachers Certification Team. We're sure you'll have questions after viewing this material, so make sure you jot them down and come along to the online workshops. There will be a workshop to accompany each vignette topic with dates to be advised. You can also find more information in the guidelines, certification of highly accomplished and lead teachers in Queensland, or contact us at certification at qct.edu.au. In our last session, we discussed what effective evidence looks like. In this session, the focus is on effectively annotating this evidence. We'll talk about the purpose of annotations and how to compose them so they are clear and succinct. Before we get into the specifics, it's important to remember that there is no single right way to prepare your application. We'll give you ideas and supporting resources, but how or if you use these is at your own discretion. There are two ways of thinking about compiling evidence. You may look at the descriptors first and then select evidence items to demonstrate them, or you may choose your evidence and then match it to the descriptors. You know your work best, so select the way of working that suits you. A key component of your application is the annotation of evidence. An artifact must be able to demonstrate practice and effective annotation of an artifact or sets of artifacts will enable you to demonstrate your thinking on why and how the artifacts submitted address the standard descriptors and show impact on teaching and learning. It's up to you to ensure that your artifacts are effectively annotated. This enables your assessor to understand the context of the evidence, understand why the evidence has been included in the application, make the connection between the artifacts and the descriptors being evidenced, and see the impact of your practice on student outcomes and the practice of colleagues. Annotations can take different forms. They may be notations attached to an artifact or an explanatory paragraph attached to a set of artifacts. Alternatively, they can take the form of a single statement with included links to all of your evidence. Just submitting an annotation without an accompanying artifact of evidence doesn't fulfil the requirements. One way to think of it is, are you making a claim or are you elaborating on evidence? You might be familiar with the STAR method. It's been around for decades, but it can be really useful when applied as a scaffold for composing your annotations. The situation part of the STAR is the context of the artifact of evidence. The task is the purpose or intended target of the evidence. The action, what was done to achieve the purpose or target, and the result, the impact of your practice on student outcomes and or the influence you've had on your colleagues. Let's have a look at an example. Using the STAR method, this applicant has prepared an annotation for HAT Descriptor 5.3, Organise Assessment Moderation Activities that Support Consistent and Comparable Judgments of Student Learning. The planning template you can see used here is available in our applicant support resources. The Artifact Moderation Report Year 11 General English FA2 detailed the role of the applicant in organising a moderation activity for a year level team. The artifact itself is an information pack authored by the applicant and distributed to the year level team and included the process for distributing samples, details for participants about how to prepare for the moderation, the protocols for reviewing results 
and a comparison table for student results. The artifact is the evidence, with the annotation adding context and a description of the outcome. Remember, you need to have an artifact to write an annotation against. An annotation against an individual artifact should not exceed 150 words. You'll see that the language of the descriptor has been used in the annotation, as well as the descriptor number, ensuring clarity and readability for the assessor. More examples of quality evidence can be found on the QCT website under Certification, Applicant Resources, Highly Accomplished and Lead Teacher Evidence Samples. So to summarise, effective annotations are short and concise and make it easy for your assessor to see how the evidence demonstrates the descriptor or descriptors. Explain the context and purpose. What you did is an integral part of your annotation. Identify the impact of the evidence, including the impact on your colleagues and learners. When annotating evidence, it is helpful to consider your audience. You could now have a go at composing annotations and consider turning this learning toward creating your pre-submission evidence sample. If you haven't already, don't forget to download the annotation planning template from the certification resources on the QCT website. Don't forget the guidelines is the go-to document for information about all aspects of certification. You can also find information on the QCT website. This is updated frequently, so it's a good idea to check back regularly. Contact the team with any questions at certification at QCT .edu.au or come along to the interactive workshops.